Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Evergood CTB35, which is a really interesting minimalist travel backpack. And as a big fan of the company's daily bag offerings, I was excited when this was announced as it seemed to carry over the same aesthetic and organizational layout along with some upgrades and a larger capacity that would work well for longer term travel. I've been testing this out over the past couple of weeks and in this video I'm gonna be talking about my experience using it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how this compares to some of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. In general, I'm a big fan of Evergoods' more minimal and kind of crossover vibe. To me, this almost feels like a larger CPL28 with some added bonuses. And it's an aesthetic that I feel is gonna blend in well into any environment that you take it into, whether you're going into the outdoors, exploring a city, it's also gonna be really nice for travel as it's gonna just blend in well. It's not gonna stand out as a super touristy backpack. And then moving into the exterior, the bag is made out of a 420D high tenacity nylon, which feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage and offer a nice amount of weather resistance. It does have a water resistant coating on the exterior. The bag still comes in at four pounds, so it's not super light, but this material does feel like it can help with the weight a little bit given all the different padding and features that the bag includes. And then on top of that, you have some nice YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, as far as branding, you have just the Evergoods logo here on the front, a little Velcro patch that you can add patches to if you want to customize the bag or add one of those visibility patches that Evergoods sells. You also have two awesome external water bottle pockets. This is an area where Evergoods has started to excel a lot, particularly with their uh, Civic Half Zip line of bags. It's really exciting to see it come to this bag as, you know, this is the CPL 28 bigger brother. So I'm hoping these type of water bottles make it into future versions of the CPL 24, which is one of my favorite daily bags. The implementation here is fantastic. As you can see, it easily holds the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos. You have plenty of elasticity. It should be able to hold a larger water bottle if needed. And then you also have some great depth if you have something a little bit taller. And I like that because these are elastic, they just hug the bag when they're not in use to give it a cleaner overall look. On the top and side of the bag, you have some nice grab handles. They have the aluminum stay kind of reinforcement here to give you some nice rigidity when you pick this up. As with other Evergoods bags, these can you know feel a little bit sharp on the edges. It's not gonna be super comfortable to hold the bag for a longer period of time by these handles, uh, but they feel durable and like they're just gonna allow you to get this into an overhead storage compartment or to pull it in and out of a trunk easily. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at 35 liters, which to me is a really great one bag travel size. This is the middle ground where I feel like I have enough space to travel for a couple of weeks, but I'm still gonna be able to you know, take this as a carry on in most domestic and international flights. The bag also isn't super rigid. I like how it just kind of molds around the items that I store in here. So it helps keep a more slim silhouette considering the size of the bag, which is gonna make it great not only for traveling, but also for exploring crowded cities and jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. It's very similar to other Evergoods bags that we featured, so they have a decent amount of padding. Not a whole lot of breathability on the inside, unfortunately, but these straps do have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. I also like the curved shape of the straps, and then you have the typical kind of Evergoods harness system here, which has a nice shape around your shoulders. It's a little less boxy and it really allows the straps to contour in a way that's very natural for, for your body. So really love that they've kind of kept that system here. It works great with this larger travel bag size. And then you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. Evergoods does have this system here, which I'll just call out as a risk for maybe <laughs> having a strap get accidentally lost. So that's something that you'll wanna keep in mind as it's pretty easy to remove these. As far as the back paneling, this is an area where Evergoods has made some nice updates. So you have a whole new kind of material here. It's a soft, 
foam that feels really comfortable, a little more padded than we've seen in bags like the CPL 28 and 24. It also has a little bit more ventilation. You have some air channels, elevation here to give you a little bit more airflow. The material is also a little more breathable. It's still not as breathable as some of the meshier bags that we've seen on a backpack like Tortugas. Uh, but it's definitely an improvement and something I hope to see kind of start popping up in some of Evergoods' other lines. And then they've also added this kind of luggage pass-through handle here. This is going to be great for picking the bag up, you know, if it's in a trunk or something, or also for resting this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. I was a little bit concerned when I first saw this design that the handle might dig into your back while you're wearing the bag. I haven't noticed anything like that. And then another new addition to this bag is you have a built-in waist strap. Uh, this is not removable. You can actually tuck this away in these openings that you have here at the bottom. And the waist strap, you know, is pretty well padded. It, it offers a nice amount of support, especially as it's integrated into the bag. It really feels like it can help shift some weight off of your shoulders. Now for me, I generally don't like using waist belts while traveling. I, lift, I leave these tucked away most of the times as I have it here. And that's always one of my concerns with waist belts that you can't fully remove is whether they're gonna create bulging on the back that's gonna kinda be uncomfortable to wear if you prefer not to use the waist belt. So far, it hasn't been a huge deal. I can feel them a little bit when I'm walking around with the bag like this and it's really packed out. I can kinda tell that they're there. But overall, I think it does a good job of just kinda being out of the way and then available for me to use if I really feel like I need that support or for people that always like to have a waist belt when traveling with a bag of this size. Jumping into the organizational options, this is an area where Evergoods really excels, particularly with their CPL 24 and 28. To me, that's one of the best organizational layouts that's on the market. I didn't think they could improve upon it, but I really love the updates that have been made in this bag. Primarily, you now have an additional kind of quick access pocket near the top that has an incredible amount of volume. I was really shocked just how much this pocket was able to hold. This is the newest addition. I really hope to see this in their daily bag size um, as it's very, very interesting. And so opening this up, you know, you have plenty of volume here for anything a little bit bulkier that you want to store. And it's just easy to reach down and grab whatever you need while you're traveling. So what I currently have here is my Matador Nano Dry Shower Towel. I also have a lightning cable and power brick to charge my phone and my tablet. I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then I have this really interesting toiletry set that I reviewed a while back in the video that I did for light travel accessories. This just has some toothpaste, um, some wipes for my faith, a toothbrush, a cup, just a lot of nice stuff that you might wanna grab when you're traveling and just going between flights at the airport if you wanna go into the bathroom. So this is generally a larger accessory and I was super shocked that I could just toss it into this compartment easily. And with this type of flexibility, you'll be able to toss in maybe some headphones or your wallet and your keys and your phone while going through TSA. There's no additional organization on the inside, but just a really large, flexible amount of space. And as with Evergoods' other bags, they give you a lot of volume independence here. So if you fill this up, it's not eating into the rest of the bag. On the front, you have the same type of quick access pocket that we've seen on the CPL 24 and 28, which has this vertical zipper, which is great for just swinging the bag around and grabbing what you need without having to take it off. You have a nice amount of space and volume here. So just kind of Laid at the top here, I place my Amazon Kindle, and then I also have my GoRuck Wire.mini with just some smaller accessories that I like to have with me. Down at the bottom, I place my Matador pocket blanket. And then you also have some internal organization in here, which is always helpful. So at the top, you have a smaller slot that's gonna be good for something like a pen, or in my case, I have a flashlight. And then you have another slot where I have my Apple Magic Mouse, but this might be a good place to put something like your phone so that you can reach it easily. And then you have a zippered mesh compartment, which which is gonna be great for storing smaller items that you don't want getting kind of lost in this larger space. And what I place in here is just some laundry detergent uh, that I like to take with me on trips. And then I also have a Leatherman multi-tool that is supposedly TSA friendly. I'll have to test this out and get back to everybody uh, over the next few months on whether I'm actually able to take this through or whether it's confiscated. And then at the top of the bag, you have another quick access pocket, which is gonna be an excellent spot for, again, more of those items that you just grab a lot while you're on the road or in the airport. So for me, 
I always use this spot to store my sunglasses. I have my Ray-Bans with their case. And then I also place my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. It fits in there comfortably. And then on the inside here, you also have a little lanyard with a clip that's gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool, which in my case, I have the Gerber Shard attached here. The next area that we're gonna take a look at is the laptop compartment. So you have a side access zipper. You have a zipper garage at the top, which is always nice to give you that extra peace of mind if you happen to get caught in some rain. So you have a nice wide opening here and you can easily reach your device. The updates that Evergoods has made over the past year to their laptop compartments are fantastic. So you have a very well padded, rigid sleeve. It has this Velcro uh, strap to help keep the device in place. It's gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably. Currently I have my 13 inch MacBook Pro, you can see there's some leftover space at the top. This is suspended off the bottom of the ground as well. And then you can easily grab the device. So pulling it out now on the inside, you can see that there's no sort of uh, fleece lining or anything like that to prevent against scratching, but it does offer enough space. If you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there pretty well. You can also rest the strap against an inside piece of Velcro if you prefer to just be able to grab your device, particularly while going through TSA. It's a little bit easier to just grab it without having to fuss around with the strap. So really nice thoughtfulness there. And on the inside of this compartment, you also have extra space if you wanna rest a tablet or a folder or something. And then you have a zipper that will allow you to remove the included frame sheet as needed. So really nice implementation here. It definitely feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm on the road. And then taking a look at the main compartment, you have a clamshell style opening here, which is always nice in a travel bag to make it a little bit easier to pack everything out. So the zippers go all the way down. You have some very nice smooth working zippers. And then you have a large bucket of space here, very similar layout to again, the CPL 24 and the CPL 28, just a larger volume, which works great for a modular style of packing as I normally like to pack with packing cubes. I was really surprised how much I was able to fit in here. Even at 35 liters, this felt like it held maybe a little bit more than other 35 liter bags that I've used. It might be due to the just a lack of rigidity or the simple layout, but I was able to fit a ton in here and it still didn't really feel like the bag was completely overpacked. So diving into my current travel setup here, which would get me through a couple of weeks of travel, I have here a compressible packing cube from Nomadic. I also have my Air Dot kit. I have an extra pair of shoes. This is some Toms that I like to take with me. And I also have my double-sided and compressible packing cube from Arquito. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So a really simple layout. I like that it has the bright lining so you can have some visibility into the items that you have stored in here. You also have a nice elastic slip pocket here on the back. This is a little bit pulled up off the bottom of the ground and it also just has a soft kind of stretchy material. So it's gonna be great if you wanna separate out some clothes or if you wanna place a tablet or a folder in there. And then at the top, you have a few rows of webbing, which are gonna be a nice place to store some, you know, EDC accessories. If you wanna clip some pens or flashlight, a multi-tool, maybe uh, attach something with a carabiner. I've used items such as the handy little thing pouch from Tom Vin, which combines well with this type of thing. And then if you don't wanna use it, it can just kind of stay out of the way. It lays pretty flat. And so just really love the simple layout and the amount of space offered here. And then on the flap, you have two additional zippered compartments. So you have a larger mesh one on the bottom. It has this vertical zipper so that you can reach into it without fully opening the bag. You can actually grab what's in this compartment. So I really like the thoughtfulness there from Evergoods. You, with the mesh here, you can see what's on the inside. And this compartment also has a pretty nice amount of volume. It's kind of independent. So you have some space here. I didn't really place anything too large because most of my stuff was in the packing cube. The only thing I have here is the air split kit, which is a nice just kind of miniature dot kit or EDC tech pouch medicine kit. You can use it for a lot of different stuff. And that's what this pouch is really going to be good for is, you know, to maybe separate out some clothes if you want to place your underwear and socks toiletries, you have a lot of flexibility. And then at the top, you have another zippered compartment. This one isn't mesh, so it's gonna be good for anything that you wanna keep a little less visible when you open the bag up. And this has changed a little bit from the CPL 24 and 28. It's not as leader independent, so it doesn't really stick out here on the front. They've saved that space for the new quick access pocket that I showed earlier in the video, but you still have a decent amount of capacity for the types of items that you might store in a pocket like this. If you have some snacks, some tech items, 
Um, in my case, I have a field notes notebook here, and then there's some internal organization. You have some slip pockets. They don't have a ton of elasticity, um, but it's nice that you have some separation with all the stuff that's in there. So in this one, on the right, I placed my Air card holder, which is one of the wallets that I normally like to travel with. And then to the left of that, I have my Apple Magic Mouse, which I know I had on the front, but I just placed it in here to show uh, the size of the compartment. This might also be a good spot for something like a passport. You do have some space up here near the top, so I thought this compartment might be a little bit short, but it was able to squeeze in the field notes, which I think is a little bit larger than a passport. So um, it should be able to fit comfortably. And then if not, you just have the whole space that you can use for any other accessories, medicines. It's gonna work just fine. So really love the organizational layout and space offered in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. It's just really well thought out. I love the updates that Evergiz has made. I hope some of those make their way into their future daily bags. And if you're interested in a really high quality and comfortable minimal travel bag that's gonna offer plenty of space and organization, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Evergood CTB35 over the past couple of weeks. And you can currently pre-order this on Evergood's site starting at about $310. If you pre-order, the normal price is gonna be closer to $350. So it is a pricey bag at both of those price points, in my opinion. You're getting a lot of value for that price, a very solid bag with some excellent organizational options. However, there's also gonna be a lot of other great bags in this price range that are gonna be worth checking out. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Air Travel Pack 2, which for a long time has been my go-to travel backpack. It's been the one that I come back to most often whenever I'm going on a longer trip. It still just has the best balance of features, aesthetic, and price in my opinion among many of the travel backpacks. It's comfortable, it has a great organizational layout, more than enough space, but it still manages to maintain a pretty slim and sleek silhouette highly weather resistant. Uh, so it just really kind of checks off all the boxes. It comes in at a lower price point than this as well. So if you're interested in a travel backpack that's gonna be reliable and comfortable and you wanna save a little bit of money, then that's gonna be one of the best options that you can take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is of course the GORUCK GR2, particularly the 34 liter, which is the one that I've used over the past couple of years. It's also offered in a 40 liter if you need a little bit more space. And that bag reminds me a lot of this one. It has a little bit more of a tactical vibe with some molly webbing along the front and the sides, but also just a great organizational layout, multiple pockets for everything that you need to get to. It has a rock solid build quality. It's able to hold a ton of stuff while still not looking super huge. Very protective laptop sleeve. Now that one I, I feel is not gonna be quite as comfortable as this one. I really love the GORUCK bags, but the harness system on this one just feels a little bit more broken in right out of the box, particularly the straps, and there's also a little bit more breathability in the back panel here, but the GR2 is still a bag that feels like it's just gonna hold up a little bit better to rougher usage. It just feels slightly more robust. This is a durable bag, but that one just gives me that extra bit of peace of mind and having the ability to configure the bag with various pouches and carabiners and such because of the molly webbing is also a nice bonus. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be with you for a lifetime, you have a little bit of a higher budget, that one comes in in the $400 range. Um, but you just, you know, you don't mind spending that extra money and you want something reliable that also has that little bit of a tactical vibe, then that's gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. Another bag this made me think of is the Bellroy Transit Plus backpack, which is a fantastic one bag travel option. Comes in at 38 liters, so it's a little bit bigger than this, but it feels like they can hold a pretty similar amount. I really like the silhouette and the aesthetic on that. It's very minimal, but it has a little bit more of a professional or sophisticated vibe. That's just kind of the type of aesthetic that Bellroy has. So I really like how that looks. Very high quality materials. I like the harness system on that quite a bit. I actually prefer it to the one on this one. It also has a built-in uh, waist belt that you can tuck away. Solid organizational layout. It doesn't have quite as many pockets as this bag does. A little bit more of a simpler layout, but very protective laptop sleeve. More than enough spaces for all of the accessories that you might need to carry with you. And so if you're looking for a bag that's gonna have a little bit more of a professional vibe and a simpler layout, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Able Carry Max, which is another really great minimal travel bag that's a little bit smaller than this one. It comes in at 30 liters, so it's not gonna be as good maybe for longer term travel, but it's a fantastically built bag. It has X-Pack fabric, which offers a ton of weather resistance. It feels a little bit lighter. I like the harness system on that more than this one. It just feels a little more comfortable and breathable. 
Um, the organizational layout is it's pretty simple. It doesn't have quite as many pockets as this one, but still enough for anything that you'll likely need to carry with you. Solid laptop and kind of tech area, quick access pocket. It doesn't have the same external water bottle pockets that this has, which might be a drawback for some people, but it does have a very interesting implementation in the water bottle area. And again, it's just a little bit smaller, but if you're looking for something that you can use for travel, that's not gonna be quite as big that you can maybe take onto more airlines without having to worry about size and weight restrictions, and you want something that's gonna be sleek and durable, then that's gonna be another great option to take a look at. With that being said, the Evergood Civic Travel Bag holds up really well against those options, and if you're looking for a versatile and durable travel backpack that's gonna offer plenty of space and an excellent organizational layout, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Evergood CTB and how it compares to some of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.